region to disperse and aerosolize. So I want to go back to that question. Thank you for the call, Simon. Why are why are they now kind of admitting some of this? And, and clearly, if they have weather weapons, then they could create earth calamities to push their carbon taxes. What's really behind this from your research? Well, uh, first of all, Simon's on to something. And, I, you know, here's the deal, Alex. Geoengineering, and, and again, an Austin general told me this, it's terror forming, T-E-R-R-O-R -R -R forming. The idea is to do away with humanity as you know it now. The idea is to come up with a, if you will, hybridized uh, uh, a vestige of former humanity and bring in an atmosphere that's similar, which will support the life. Look, you said something that's really, I think, even beyond the depths of what most people can understand. You said it's almost like all the demons have been turned loose. All hell has opened up. And I know this sounds almost metaphoric, and the monsters out there, the, the, the two-legged monsters that are terrestrial origin will say, oh, I don't believe all that stuff. He's talking about what Simon, the caller, was talking about, is they are actually manipulating the atmosphere to make it inhospitable to mankind, but very hospitable to the genetic mutations and I, what I call the uh, monsters are making laboratories, you know? Well, all and I know is this stuff is all really going on. And, and if what we know, right? I, I mean, Hillary said taking over the Internet is going to be the new Manhattan Project. And she admitted we have many other Manhattan Projects. They do. And they're just taking all our resources and building God knows what. They act like they don't care. And then every chance they get, they're massacring Christians all over the world. And it is spiritual. They want to play God. They want to do ugly things. Frank in New York, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Go ahead. Good afternoon, my friends. How are you? Good, brother. Go ahead. Okay, I have a question for you, Alex, and another question for Mr. Carl. Sure, go uh, ahead. Mr. Carl, it's a pleasure to talk to you, sir. How are you? Thank you. Okay. Um, you guys were talking about um, um, you know, mixing the seed. You know, in the Bible, it states, um, keep my decrees, do not, make, do not make different kinds of animals, do not plant your field with two kinds of seed, do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. Um, these people, and you're absolutely right, these people are Luciferians. I mean, even, you know, when the Garden of Eden, you know, when Eve ate that apple, you know, the devil basically said, you will become God. So these people believe that they're going to, their salvation is through Nazism, that they're going to live forever, which is, which is totally a... a, a, a it's, it's they're playing true. God. It's they're true. on a total power trip being promised by the God of this world, whether it's real or not for atheists, the archetype, the mass consciousness, whatever you want to call it, it's real. Like Kurzweil said, I don't believe in God yet. I'm going to become God. The globalists believe they're a God, and the God they act like historically is the exact duplicate of Lucifer the devil. Steve Quayle. Well, God in the book of Genesis set up barriers and saw what, said what he created was good. So every barrier that God created is now coming down. That's what Jesus meant when he said the gates of hell would And not men's prevail. genetics were mixed and all this wild Absolutely, stuff that reads like Alex, a science fiction book. I know. I, I just the public, I don't think, can handle all this. The point is the elite believe it, and then God destroyed all the life to get rid of this abomination. Well, whether that happened or not, folks, and, I, and of course I'm a Christian, I know it did, it's all happening again, and the elite are following the Bible to a T, except they think Lucifer is the winner. Steve? Absolutely. Look, the Vatican, I'm doing, you know, just, uh, you know, we're doing our True Legends series. My film team just got back uh, from, from Europe, uh, you know, Rome. And, and what I'm telling you this, Alex, is what Tom Horn and others, Chris Putnam, you had Leo Zagami on your show. Others are, are saying the same thing. Look, they're ready to announce, whether people believe it or not, they're ready to announce that God did not create us, that we are the alien offspring of extraterrestrials. And that's what Prometheus is their real religion. Even the New York Times admitted that. Uh, the yep. transpermia stuff. And then expanding on that, they've got the Vatican astronomy and saying, oh, yes, there are other flocks. Oh, yes, aliens. I mean, clearly, is it going to be a Project Blue Beam where they admit they have plans? Uh, just like in China, they're projecting these fake cities in the sky to freak everybody out. I mean, will it be real? Well, it, it'll be beyond real, okay? Blue Beam and the technology for Blue Beam, you know, I mean, that goes back a long time. That's 20 years old plus. You know, I remember talking about that. You start talking about that when you're first started your radio career. But the point is, is that what I'm talking about is the real manifestation. And you're seeing that with what is it, childhood, childhoods and, you know, uh, uh, the Arthur C. Clarke that's on the sci-fi channel where the aliens are, are cloaked, but they finally manifest themselves. And they can the give closet. you anything and everything you want. That's the inventor of the right. communication satellite. 
uh, right. Arthur C. Clark, MI6. They can give you everything you want. There's just a little, little payoff at the end, though. Right, and here's the thing. You cannot separate the evil that's happening now from its supernatural origin. One of the differences, I always try and deal with the root of a matter. And when I spend, you know, all the years I've spent on this stuff researching it, footnoting it, I, I can tell you this. I've learned that people can handle it if it's presented in a historically footnoted version. For instance, you know, Empire Beneath the Ice, how the Nazis won World War II. Most people have never stated publicly that I know that the Nazis won World War II. The evidence is there. And yet, when we talk about genetic experiments, we talk about weather control. You know, you and I did a show on your show together, uh, I guess an interview, on xenogenesis and the idea of sex robots. Okay, look, these guys are perverts. You know, we're seeing every form of mythological, of legendary mixes going on uh, in the... The headlines. I mean, they're getting yeah. us ready with Facebook having 50 different sexual orientations. So when they, with the chemicals in the food and water, uh, you know, making us behave in artificial ways, we won't even know what to do because our minds have been so scrambled. Absolutely. And look at the men. You know, there's a scripture, a curse that comes upon a nation that forget, forgets God that says the, the men in the midst of thee have become women. Who would have ever thought with the advent of the birth control pill and the estrogen going into the water systems? of the world's, uh, you know, those who are at least in the Western world, look at what's happening to, uh, uh, to the pretty much the uh, Western world, and especially, and this isn't a racist statement, but eugenics was aimed at the black community, and thank God there's a lot of really smart blacks out there that are listening to you and listening to me on that, but the birth control, you know, you, you probably quoted it, uh, the former head of Morocco made the statement that the ultimate weapon of the invasionary forces of Mohammed would be the wombs of their women. So now you've got, and by the way, I don't call them immigrants, I call them invasionists, okay? The idea of, of hundreds of thousands of people coming into this country that cannot be screened, are not being screened, and are being armed. Alex, all the weapons, all the ammunition that you and I carried the stories on, that's all in strategically placed warehouses for the armies of the Mahdi, which are already within our border. It's not when it happens, excuse me, it is when it happens, but the more important question is, watch it happening before your eyes. It, it should be the ultimate wake-up call. Well, I want to go back to calls. It's All I know is the elite believe in all this bizarre occult stuff. They believe they're communicating with entities that are giving them advanced knowledge. You look at all the stuff that's going on around us, all the technology you look at how everything's hidden and, and, and it's basically a fraud right behind the scenes. And I can't even get the general public to admit that there are emergency centers that have already been built at military bases, which, which the Army.mil, we'll, we'll put the internment camp document up, says we're going to, quote, re-educate Americans and how they're going to process their Social Security numbers. I mean, I wish none of this was true. And then anybody in the know, it, it's a weird paradox, Steve, and I'm going to go back to calls, but... It's woken up the military, especially mid-level and high-level, because they now have to know it's real because they're, they might go operational. They know the cover story's bull, but then the general public doesn't know about it. So it has had the effect of waking up a lot of people in the government, which is paradoxical. You think of the government as the enemy under a corrupt system, but actually it's one of the more awake groups because they are not as compartmentalized. And so I just don't see where this goes. I don't see the globalist is... Are, are, are in as good a position as they would like us to believe, except then it doesn't matter how out in the open it is to us because for the people in a trance, it's just, it doesn't even matter. So it's just, wow. I mean, what an exciting time to be alive, Steve. Well, it is, Alex. And again, the thing is, is that the best we can do is by the grace of God and, and the love that God has for his creation that he doesn't want to see destroyed. You know, the Bible says God's people perish for lack of knowledge. Well, we give them the knowledge, but they have to, they have, their hearts have to become alive, okay, to the truth. You know, uh, the truth is so foreign now. Look, we have the greatest manifestation of lies coming from the U.S. government that's ever taken place, and people take it as, if they say it, it's got to be true. You know, you can give all the statistics on gun control. You can show all the pictures of people being shot in the head in trenches, but to the liberal, the agenda, okay, the agenda, listen, the, the liberal mindset is like Michael Savage says, in my opinion, it's a mental disorder. And what's happening 
is is that you have almost a uh, a universal uh, nightmare of denial going on in the masses, but that's exactly what the globalists, the Satanists, the Luciferians, and and the devil himself want. You know, the best their whole is, goal, their whole goal. You know, I haven't read Childhood's End in probably twenty years, yeah, and obviously Clark was MI six. This is literally their plan, except it's humans thinking they're going to become a god and merge with it. But you take out the aliens, it's Childhood's End. That's their plan. Well, absolutely, but also, look, we know that the Antichrist, the, the person who, Antichrist means takes the place of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I came here, receive me not, another will come claiming to be me. That's why they need this false world war. They need the World War Three, which then the Antichrist will claim is Armageddon, and he now is the Christ in place of Jesus Christ. And the point is, is that it's a spiritual war. But unfortunately, Alex, all the prophecies of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, you know, uh, Daniel, Hosea, Amos, all the Old Testament prophets were in the times right now that they, they prophesied and people say, I don't believe all that stuff. Well, then you explain to me how this could all come about with a global mind outside of an entity apart from that global mind orchestrating it. I call it the symphony from hell and Lucifer is its conductor. And everything they're doing is pushing an end to your individual consciousness and buying into this larger consciousness, but it's not a good consciousness you're buying into. It's pure death. It hates you. More calls coming up. We're on. But I was thinking about the allegory of childhood's end. We're going back to your calls because Steve Quayle brought it up. Then I'm going to get into the whole World War scenario with Russia. But if you look at that plot of childhood's end, not the miniseries. I haven't seen it, but I'm told it's different on Sci-Fi Channel. But the book itself, written by... The inventor of the communication satellite and a bunch of other stuff, uh, MI6 futurist, MI6 mastermind, the late, great Arthur C. Clarke. He realized that all of his books were an allegory, and he, he actually wrote essays on this, admitting it, uh, that like 2001 is a parable. Because, you know, only one human transcends and goes to the Stargate, and he's got to defeat the... AI first, the artificial intelligence, his own creation, which the elite admit they expect to have a battle with. I mean, these people, this is a religion, folks. This is all planned out. And, and then if they can create AI, harness it, control it, then they're going to go and be these star children and the new son will be born Lucifer. I mean, that's the plot of those three books. Gee, I wonder what he's telling you when the new star is called Lucifer, the new God's born. The humans go to the dimension, come back, ignite the sun, they're a new God. And they said they can take us there. They got a brand new God. And they can slay us there. They can kill us there so we can be reborn. They got a brand new God. Brand new God. And that's what they're telling us. And that's it. Oh, free health care. Oh, free goodies. Oh, free shots. Oh, we're going to help you. But it's not even like childhood's end where they give you the shot and you live an extra 100 years. They give you the shot, you fall down, have to start having convulsions. That's how incredible the mind control is, is the, the inserts on the vaccines say they don't protect you, say they can kill you, say they can give you all these, all these disorders, lowers your immunity to the flu, and people look at me and they go, that can't be true. The system's good. And I go, just read the insert, please, please, please. They go, no, I'm not going to. And there is that mass Stockholm syndrome. My term. Mass Stockholm syndrome. And again, it's that paradox of most people that actually work in the CIA or the FBI or all these different agencies or contractors themselves are either uh, ideologues who are compartmentalized and believe what they're doing, or they're completely freaked out, completely whacked out, and completely scared, and they're just trying to do the limited amount of bad they can. That's not going to save any of you people. We're going to go to your calls, Ray and Mike and Chris and Karen and, and Maya, Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com is our guest. You can look at Steve Quayle's view of the world and say, man, that's pretty far out, some of it, but I thought it was basically 50% far out. 20 years ago, now I think it's like 10% far out. 
But the point is, whatever the truth is, every time we finally learn it, it's even freakier. And I go back to that paradox, Steve, and we're going to these